and you are watching coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference from here in the Grand Hotel. I'm Christy McDonald. Thanks so much for joining me. It is day two of the conference, and we are discussing a number of things here at the Grand Hotel, everything from education to the business climate in the state of Michigan, and we've been specifically looking at the city of Detroit and the business climate there, and really the growth in the downtown, in the midtown area, and stretching now in towards the neighborhoods. And joining me right now to talk a little bit about that is Olga Savic Stella. She's the Vice President of Business Development at the Detroit Economic Growth Corporation. Olga, it's always great to see you. Likewise, Christy. And Deb Dansby, she is the Vice President of Rock Ventures. Deb, it's good to see you as good well. Good morning, Christy. So we have had, um, we've had conversations now the last couple of years up at Mackinac, so I want to first just kind of get your impressions of what the feeling is here, what the mood is, and kind of some of the conversations that you've had, Olga, so far. It's a positive mood. I think that um, people are really excited to see the positive changes that are happening, really within city government. You know, it's the Mayor Duggan's speech yesterday, uh, talking about all the improvements that are happening to basic city services. I mean, that's really foundational <laughs> for economic development because you're not going to be able to attract businesses and investment. If people don't understand that their investments are, are going to be um, solid and stable. Deb, what about you? What have you heard, and, and what kind of co interesting conversations have you had? Um, actually, it's run the gamut. This year, like Olga said, it's so positive. Uh, you know, the movement within city government to really uh, reinforce the critical services, to be aggressive about getting into the neighborhoods and bringing focus to the neighborhoods as well as, you know, the urban core of the city, I think, you know, it's really trying, it sparked that hope and yeah. confidence back into everyone that is really making investments, whether that's your residents making investments or your corporations like Rock Ventures making investments downtown. Right. And, and that's interesting because we have seen so many of the headlines come from downtown and the development right. there. And now that we are starting to see, okay, now it's the neighborhoods that we need to, to shore up to right. make sure that people who live there can enjoy the downtown right. that you have been. So, um, I mean, I, I guess working very hard to develop. So let me start with you first, Deb. Talk to us a little bit about what Rock Ventures is doing right now. I, every time I talk to you, you're like, it is crazy, it is it busy. Is. <laughs> we have projects that are like two years down the road. We've got something that's two months right in front of us. So um, give us an idea of what you're working on right now. So you're right, our pipeline is really diverse in the st from a size perspective, a timing perspective. Um, we have just over 50 properties in the portfolio. We are still focused on the downtown footprint. Um, we've invested a, about $1.3 billion to date and have just over 8 million square feet. So that gives you kind of the macro mm -hmm. view. But there are several properties um, that are smaller in scale that can be turned around and reactivated very quickly within a year um, or six months, depending on their current condition. And then there are those larger projects, you know, like the Hudson site mm -hmm. or um, the jail site that everyone is still continuing to look at and do due diligence. So we have really a complete planning process that kind of breaks it down from uh, taking you know a segment like jail site or Greek town area and really coming up with a strategy that connects we're very committed to every one of our developments bringing connectivity downtown making it so it's walkable adding the whole placemaking element to everything that we're doing so that people feel like they tr almost transition right. from one thing to another, whether you're enjoying Campus Martius and you can then walk into Greektown and enjoy an evening there, or you're walking over into Capitol Park and you're gonna see some type of art right. display or art event. It's bringing the diversity of activity downtown, um, the building activity diversity of employers mm -hmm. downtown, and then the entertainment side of it, so mm -hmm. that people can get kind of that live, work, and play um, environment. So then I guess the, the next question for me would be, how do you get that vision in terms of then, how do you work with someone like Olga or the city of Detroit? And right. then you, you figure out then how, how, what this is going to look like. So everyone is really on the same page in terms of what kind of development is the best for the city in, in, in starting to grow again, Olga. Yep. So it takes a lot of stakeholders uh, and a lot of stakeholder involvement uh, from all the different um, entities, whether it's um, philanthropy that's put in a lot of the gap money over the years, the public entities, the city and the state, the business community and residents, and, and also kind of understanding what it is it that we want downtown to be. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not just the city's downtown, it's our region's downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and to have a world-class downtown that our region is proud of, it needs to have a diversity of options that's welcoming uh, to our whole community. And so, um, so it really requires quite a bit of input. Um, it requires understanding data and trends um, and, and trying to build something that's authentic Detroit and not a copy of 
some other community somewhere else in the country. Whatever we can do in Detroit has to be about Detroit, for Detroiters, and, and for our region. And it's not very often that you get to almost really recreate a city. Right. I mean, and, and, and it's not that we're, we're changing what Detroit is, that the guts are there, right. you want to say. Right. Yeah. But to be able to sit there and say, my goodness, in the year 2014, that you're looking ahead to how do we transform Detroit into something brand new? And you know, there are urban areas around the country that don't have this challenge, and, and you were both, I would say, yeah. right in the middle of it, Deb. Yeah. We are, and, and you're absolutely right. It's, there's a great opportunity with Detroit being where it's at, right, in its rebirth and its kind of right. redevelopment. But the beauty of Detroit are the bones. Right. We have all of the right ingredients right. to make it, like Olga said, this unique city that is all about leveraging the real estate, the unique real estate we have and making sure that we keep that um, intrinsic to the mm -hmm. infrastructure, um, taking our heritage of the music and the automotive industry and just the entrepreneur you know, spirit of Detroit right. and weaving it through all the things that we're trying to do. And I think there's a concentrated effort. You know, we've said it several times up here. I've heard it several times, but really this is our time. Right. I think everyone, um, it's different than it has been in the past because when I say everyone, it's all the different public sectors, it's all the different private sectors and nonprofits really are getting behind that philosophy, a common fundamental set of guideposts, right. if you will, about what we want our city to be. And those guideposts are pretty easy to build on because it's really about what Detroit is and what right. Detroiters want it to be. So I think it's um, it's a unique opportunity, but it's it's really easier in a way because of what Detroit brings. Olga, what are some, of, I guess, the last question here, the biggest challenges that you're facing right now, and, and what do you see where we're going to be in about a year or so? So I, th I think it's uh, balancing all these different uh, priorities and opportunities um, because there's so much momentum happening downtown, mm -hmm. but there's also momentum building in employment districts and neighborhood corridors outside of downtown. Right. And just you know trying to staff up to address all of those, trying to really focus on what the big plays are. We're going through a planning process right now with I-375. Should it remain a freeway? Should it come up you know above grade? There are some really big opportunities to, to, to set forward um, a, a new, you know, kind of new path for the city. And, right. and so it's just balancing all those <laughs> things, trying to, trying to you know, make sure uh, we can move them all forward um, and making sure we welcome every investor with open arms. And it's going to be very interesting to see where we are in a year from now. Absolutely. And I look forward right. to having that conversation with both of you. Thank you so much for joining me. I Thanks appreciate it. Enjoy yes. the rest of the conference. You too. Thank you. And we'll be right back with more of the Mackinac Policy Conference. Stay with us.